All right, we're going to show you how to measure this uh, this O2 sensor meter. I, I mean O2 sensor. I put the ohms meter on here, and it's down on the 200 range. Uh, this is a Radio Shack meter. It's like $19. You can pick them up at Harbor Freight or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter. Just as long as it's an ohm meter. And what we're looking for here when we do the ohms is the two wires that are the same color. Those are the wires that go to the heater. And this is the 95 Pathfinders have a heated element. And what you do is you put one lead on one side of the white wire of the same color. And you put the other lead on the other one. Let's see if I can get it in there. And it should be about 6 ohms. And it's 6 ohms. That tells you that the heater portion is this good. You can drive the vehicle with the O2 sensor disconnected. But it will eat a lot of fuel. And it's not good for your catalytic converter. So, but it, you know, in a pinch, if you got to get home or something, you can just disconnect this on a 95 Pathfinder. I don't know what it's going to do for other cars. So, on the driver's side here. And we're going to come up under here. Here's your uh, torsion bar. There's your exhaust manifold. And the, move your hand there, buddy. And the O2 sensor is right up in there. Anyways, if you warm the car up, drive it around the block and bring it in, it'll come right off. And uh, my worker here said, yeah, as soon as I put it on there, boop, it came right off. So go ahead and put the red awesome. chip on there. It's a 22 millimeter or the rough American equivalent is 7 8. There you go. So we're going to go ahead and change that out. Okay, we're back. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, feed this down there. Notice I tied a string to it. So go ahead. There we go. We just feed it right on down. Let's see if I can get in here a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry, did it get stuck on something? Yeah, it got stuck on something. Alright, hold on. Alright, now try it. Alright, there you go. Alright, let me get you the new sensor and you can uh, unloop the loop on it and uh, send it back up to me. Here we go. Alrighty. Screw it in first yeah. and then route it. Alright, here we are. We're on the bottom side. We put some uh, anti-seize on the threads that comes with it and uh, worker here is installing it don't know if you can see it but he's actually using the camera and uh because i can't see it but he can so he can just put the camera where he needs it the problem with these stupid things is that they tend to unscrew unscrew well themselves yeah they got, because they because they, the they, they have the cable on there and they're extremely annoyed but now it's pretty much in there I ended up having to uh, kind of put it in through here, through there, and then up around and somehow managed to squeeze it in there. And so now it's pretty much on there and all I need to do is tighten it. Oh, shut up. It's whatever. I see it. There you go. Get it on there a bit. Give it a good reef. Rotate the wrench. Stick it on there. I don't know what the pounds per inch on it, but I'm just going to snug it up real good. Oh, looks like we need to go a little bit more there. Okay, we got the old or the old sensor out and the new one installed. Now we're going to go ahead and try to get this uh, connector up here. Remember, we tied it to the string. Hey, there it is. Look how easy that is. Just pull it right up. Can you imagine having to crawl under the vehicle and mess with that? So, anyways, there we go. Here's the new one. So we're going to get things hooked up a little bit, and then we'll uh, get back to this video. All right, we're back. Uh, we're going to go ahead. I decided to show you what we did. Just tied a slip knot into it. So, basically, you just uh, you tie a, a little loop, and then you run the string through it and as it goes through here. As it goes through, I 
that, you just wrap it around this and then pull it through. But anyways, uh, now that we've got it up through here, you can show down there. Now that we've got it up through here, now we got to route it underneath this down here and underneath the air conditioning. Room. So I'm going to do that right now. Try to use my left hand to get it. There you go. Bring it up through here. Give that a yank. This goes on the back side of that for now. Okay, and then it'll come back through here. I'll back up a little bit. So there you go. So you can uh, push that down, pull this, wrap that underneath there like that. Stick this back in here. I don't know if you can see that from over here. Come over here and look. Okay, so it just just uh, goes right into this uh, this little area right right down in here. Right down there. Goes right through there. Okay. Goes into the back side of this. Is that the inside? Cool. Alright, this just goes on to here like this. And then this one goes on uh, this little tab right here. You just take that and you push it on there. So the tab sits right there. Let me get this on there. Here we go. That's it. We're all done up here. The only thing we have left is uh, we got to put the little uh, strap on the other side that goes down here. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here or not, but it's right next to the dipstick. There's a hole right in here, right there. You can see the light a little bit through there, and that's where this plugs in. This actually just uh, plugs into that hole, and then you wrap the cables around it and then feed this, uh, feed this through that little little hole there and this retains it. I'm going to show you how to install this real quick. Uh, you just grab these wires right here. Uh, see if you can come up over the top over here. Notice they're on the back side of the transmission uh, filler tube. You bring them up over the top. Grab this. Wrap this up over it. Stuff it through the hole. And it, and it locks in like that. And you can bring it this way. And then it goes probably easier to just pull this out and you can take this let me see if I can get it here take this get a better view here grab this little bugger here clamp and, uh, trying to keep my fingers out of the way for you it's not easy yeah find a little hole it should be like right in here somewhere right there there it is uh, come on there it is went in I'm gonna get this back get my hand back in here and push it in a little bit further there you go so there it is that's installed all I have to do now is put the transmission thing back in and that'll be right there if you can grab me that dipstick there so Okay, we got the uh, dipstick in there. It's right back down in there. Now we're gonna go ahead and start it up and see if our problem is solved. Hopefully it is. Go ahead, fire it up. Step on the gas, see if the problem's gone. Gone? Normal? Normal? All right. Okay. okay, I guess that has solved our problem. So, off we go. Alright, we're going to go ahead and see if we can't erase these codes. Go ahead and turn the ignition on. Don't start it though, just turn it on. Alright, there we are. We're in the codes now. Alright, now I'm going to turn this all the way clockwise till it stops. And it's going to go into diagnostic mode. One, two. One, two, three. All right, now we're gonna move this back over here and then it should give us codes. We should get 12 and 33 again. Uh, the red one does the uh, tens, one, two, three. And the green does the ones, one, two, three. So we still got a code 33, okay. But we're gonna go ahead and erase it. Now the codes will repeat as you'll see here. One, two, three. And one, two, three again. And we're gonna go back to mode four. 
one, two, three, four, and shut the key off. Alright, now go ahead and turn the key back on. Okay, we're going to come all the way around again to diagnostic mode. One, two, one, two, three, and we're going to go stop it and see if it's got any codes. If it gives us a 44 or 55, that means no errors. One, two, three, four, five. So the next one should be fit another five. One, two, three, four, five. And the codes are done. So now we can just uh, turn the key off. Codes are erased. So now what you do is you go drive it around and see how it, see how it works out. Okay, I guess that concludes it. We ran it down the road and didn't have any more codes or anything, and uh, everything ran great. So, hope this helps somebody. Uh, sorry it took so long to get part two in there, but uh, I got busy with other projects and things were happening. So, God bless you all, and y'all have a good one, and give me a thumbs up if, uh, if I helped you out. And uh, take it easy. Bye.